Hey, weirdos, I'm Ash. And I'm Elena. And I'm Alvin. And I'm Francel. And this is Morbid with a little crossover. Affirmative murder is here. (laughs) Man. First of all, I have to let you guys know that we're bringing in behind the, clo- the close curtain that we're going to open that curtain up like Wiz. Um, <laughs> you guys are fulfilling something for me and Fran. We've been beefing for oh, years no. now. Beefing. I guess years. Whenever I came on and guested, oh, had a great yeah. time. But uh, <laughs> Fran wasn't able to make it for scheduling reasons. And he's been holding it over my head for since that time has happened. He's been very aggressive and <laughs> oh, saying no. all kind of passive aggressive things. We've come to blows almost several times. So <laughs> it feels good to get a redo and have the full quartet here. And so I want to say thank you, Fran. Please speak and let the people know that you're real. It's yeah, I am real. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's an honor to be on here with you guys. I would say the queens of true crime podcasting. Oh, my God. Um, thank you. Yeah. So um, I, gotta turn I think red. The last time. Yeah, I think the last time Alvin maybe hired somebody. To like flat my tires, so I couldn't. Come last time, so you can't prove that's that. Why, that's why I didn't make you it. You can't prove I'm, that. I'm happy. I'm happy to be here, though. Happy. We're, We're happy to have, to have you. you guys. I love. That's what. As soon as we got on, I was like, Fran is here. Like the we whole. We get to meet Fran. The whole crew is here. We had so much fun collabing with Alvin last time, but we were like, we we need a Fran. Something felt like we it was missing a, a yeah, little it's, bit. It's his fault. It's his fault. Let's blame it on him. <laughs> we'll but blame I'll... it on Alvin. This took a turn I did not expect. Alvin, um, why don't you just go? Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. I'll be on by myself. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> That's why we're in my house. So, no. So. <laughs> I will so. not be forced out of my home this way. <laughs> um, but yes, again, like, like Fran said, thank you guys for having us. It's uh, great to see you guys again. Um, always a great time having the conversation with you guys individually and together i know that's been so fun too i know we've done a couple of those over the years yeah so um yeah yeah you guys are you guys are cool peeps we tried you know so are you <laughs> right back at you yeah Ditto. this is a hey, beautiful Fran, family right yeah, now yeah, Fran, why don't you get out of here <laughs> suddenly turned it's back on myself <laughs> <laughs> we can all be in this together we're a family yes. here Alina's like, team. stop arguing like, no <laughs> we we don't want the kids arguing uh but we you know what we've got something kind of wild to talk about today and I'm oh, really dude. excited about it a little bit because it's different. It is than different. What we've, we've done on our yeah, show. Yeah, I felt I felt like you guys would enjoy a conversation about a medieval tool of um, execution and how things come to an end. You know, some one day people just stopped planking. Like one day a guy did a plank, and then everybody was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's not in anymore. That's not cool." And so this is the execution version of that. I felt like this is. It's always cool. It's interesting to see when trends, you know, subside. And this yeah. happened in in this case with the guillotine. You know, like TikTok yeah. sounds go out of style. Yeah, stop. So They're like, "Why are you using that sound? Don't use that sound." Yeah, yeah. skinny it's jeans. Right the, yeah. Same exact that dog thing. Going, hell no! Hell, hell no! <laughs> it's got like a couple more weeks left, it's you know. Not. And then someday somebody's gonna do that, and they're like, "No, no, you're we old. don't do that anymore." <laughs> you're <Yeah>. old. <laughs> Yeah, gross. This is the exact same thing. (laughs) And I think so what we're going to be talking about today, and you're going to be able to hear Fran and Alvin tell this story for the most part, which is great, because you're going to hear what amazing storytellers there are. And it's going to make you want to listen to this and then jump right over to their feed and start gobbling up everything that they have to offer. So... That's up to you guys, of course, but we do have a podcast called Affirmative Murder. So if you like what we do here, come check us out. Please. We, we, there's more, there's room for you on the train. It's trains, trains, yes. podcast of trains. Yeah. Yeah. I like it's trains. The trains. trains are good. We're the conductors. Trains, planes, Ex- automobiles. automobiles. Yes. Boats. Yeah. All However, of the above. However you get we there. We highly is your recommend business. it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't transportation. We will say we're, we're not going to force you over there, but we are highly suggesting by like shoving you as hard as we can over there. Yes. But like Tell gently, you, you'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's then, all you need to know. <laughs> so should we just, should we go? Should we get into it? So let's, let's go. Let's, let's do it. Go. Like let's let's do, do this. this. Like little John. <laughs> okay. Um. So let's start with like the history of the guillotine, right? Let's, yes. So the guillotine's inception, guys, like many things in modern history, is steeped in like rich white man smoking mirrors. So one day this guy named... um. His name was Joseph Ignis Guillotine. This was in 1789. He comes into a room and he's all like, 
<laughs> Super <laughs> Bowl oh. 52. Which basically that was, was actual audio from that moment, actually. Yeah, we sourced it. Yeah. Very rare audio. Yes, exactly. That was a, a, a archival archival audio <laughs> yes. from the French Parliament. Um, but basically, what he said was, "Hey guys, like the way we're killing people is super like barbaric and uh, gross and torturous, and we need to like streamline this, clean things up. Let's get more inundated in the future and leave that stuff in the past." And then he left the room and. Two less socially important people, poor people, <laughs> then did all the hard work and invented the actual guillotine. It's more specifically, their names were Tobias Schmidt and Antoine Louis. So, but it, the the device is called the guillotine, named after yes. the rich guy named Joseph Ignace Guillotine, who just had an idea, <laughs> like loosely about cleaning up how people die. And then they were like, how about this? And he's like, that's fine. Oh, put my name on it. Absolutely. And, put my name on it and I'll trademark it and patent it as well. So they wanted to make something that's more barbaric and gross, <laughs> but, but like quicker. Quick. Oh, no, I would, I would disagree. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who wants to look up like the Western European modes of, of killing people before the guillotine, straight up some of the craziest things I've ever heard of. There was one, there was a chair like a metal chair that they would just put over fire and the chair would get really hot and then you just would burn to death on the chair. That's crazy. You wouldn't die. So then it's like everything basically before this was like, we torture you for a long time and then yeah. we hit you over the head with a mallet. Yeah. Because you don't yeah. die. You just, we just torture you really bad. They had another one. They tie you to and a wheel. And then we put you out. Yeah, they're like, all breaking right. Breaking on the rack. <laughs> yeah. That was, the rack, was that breaking yes. on the rack? And they yes. like break That's your bones like misery. One by one. Yep. Just like. <laughs> like slow as fuck. Oh, so. Just like, turn as you they crank into you. like a scorpion essentially. Oh. Like and then. <laughs> I feel like I feel yeah. that when we talk about it. It's awful. It and it's like, oh. you stole some bread. To the rack you yeah. go. And then the rack wouldn't kill you. And then they would like let the bir the birds eat you slowly. Yeah. Also, I read that they would either, also they would hit you in your chest with a hammer or your what? stomach oh. because these were fatal blows, but over time. So like, I think we burst your appendix when we hit you with this hammer in the stomach. So now so after you break all your bones, you'll die in like three days from wow. like stomach. Yeah. stomach wow. Yeah. They were like sepsis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll kill you. <laughs> like you'll die eventually. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. But I, it's kind of it's kind of weird hearing the name now. Where it's like we know his name, but it, it being named after a machine that was like beheading people is kind of cr is, is crazy. Yeah. Be. Yeah. It, it's like if somebody name was like name was like Noose or something. Exactly. Like, hey, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm New Simmons. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. You're like whoa. <laughs> Wait a second. But yes, yeah, guillotine, you think of the action and it's like, no, it's just some guy who yeah. had an idea. The guy's name, yeah. <laughs> and some people say it guillotine. When I was younger, everyone said guillotine. Guillotine? And then it like switched over into guillotine, I feel like. Yeah, because we have this conversation all the time. And of, I, like, how do you really say it? I like float back and forth. Sometimes I'll revert thing? to guillotine. I think it might be. I say guillotine though, and I always have. Yeah. Well, I might have yeah. made this up. I have imposter syndrome, <laughs> so I'm like, it. It's French, and I'm like, I'm gonna say it French. But if, yeah, if I was I just being myself, I would say guillotine because guillotine there's two else. Right? In. Yeah, right. I mean, that's how it looks. <laughs> they both feel right. Yeah, I don't like think either times. is wrong. I don't either. It's dialect, it's all right? Not, yeah. If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck. So shut the fuck <laughs> yeah. up. You know? Absolutely. Certainly and not. A it's a guillotine. <laughs> yeah. They weren't calling it Gilly Gilly Hicks. There you go. <laughs> That's a very deep cut reference. I don't know if anybody shot the Gilly Hicks. I used to work. I worked. I worked in the Abercrombie Umbrella, so I was, you know. Hell yeah! yeah. Shout out to Gilly Hicks. Gilly TBT. Shout out to Gilly Gil Hicks. <laughs> shout to Gil Hicks. <laughs> no, but uh, as we all said, all jokes aside, though, the guy, even though he just had an idea, the idea was, you know, steeped in some level of dignity and not torturing people. So the criminals of French of France's past should really thank this guy because. Like I said, the stuff was very torturous. It was, it was, could have been worse. It, yeah, you, <laughs> you, you know? could have been melted on a chair for like punching your friend. Yeah, from the butt up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> butt up. Which is way worse. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, the guillotine or guillotine went on to become the symbol of the French Rev Revolution because the people saw it as this great equalizer. Because of the, you know, the ideas behind its inception, people believed that whether you were royalty or you came from the lowest of the low, the guillotine was the great equalizer. Like everybody who, who commits the same crimes, they die by the guillotine. Mm. And this was enforced by the fact that uh, Louis the Sixteenth and his wife Marie Antoinette ever oh, heard of her? Queen, literally, <laughs> literally. Um, she, they were both beheaded during the French Revolution. Like the people revolted against them and cut their heads off wow. in a in mutiny. Damn. And um, they were kind of like the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey of the 17th <laughs> <Yeah>. century. <laughs> 
I would say so. They kind of were. You know, they were. They were. The, they were the it couple until were they? until the tides until started. they were. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody loved them until they did. Until they- <laughs> everybody loved Marie Antoinette. Had great gowns and she was like super trendy until the Super Bowl. <laughs> So, you know, we'll see how the Super Bowl goes, but um, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't end the way that uh, Marie Antoinette and Louis, and Louis went We out. can all hope. We can all hope, yeah. It would, <laughs> it would be a more interesting Super Bowl. But yeah, it'd be different. different. Yeah. But in a different would, way. In a different yeah. way. <laughs> in, a, in a very different way. So um, It would hit a little different. <laughs> <laughs> it, would hit very, it would hit very different. Um, That's so, very true. Um, for the next hundred years, though, the guillotine shined as a symbol of France's altruistic and dignified stance on capital punishment. And over time, the public sentiment towards the execution style for high crimes, it started to shift. And this really kind of really, really took place in during World War II when Adolf Hitler was killing thousands of people mm-hmm. publicly using the guillotine. But it was more it was malicious. He just if you dissented against the regime yeah. of, of Adolf Hitler, yeah, he would coming. behead you cut publicly. Yeah. So really, yeah. people were like, oh, this isn't this um, equaling force in the caste system is just as a torture device. The idea that the PR team around uh, the guillotine when it first came out was super strong. Mm-hmm. It was like Steve Jobs level where they're like, "This are we cutting your head off? Yeah, but like, it's, it's we got it's Wi-Fi. Chill. Yeah. So you know, like, it's got like, Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has Bluetooth. And people are like, whoa, this is revolutionary. Like, this is next it's level next stuff. Level. It's like, yeah. you're cutting off somebody's head and it falls in the basket. So like, you can wear a button-up shirt while it happens. Yeah. So <laughs> This is dignified. What song do you want to go yeah. out to? <laughs> so, so, we all can watch this publicly. It's super clean. Nobody gets blood on them because it's so fast. It cuts the head off. It goes in the basket. Yeah. So yeah, we can, all be, we can all go to yeah, like just, a nice classy dinner after this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But it's a barbaric it's a tool that slices <laughs> off your head and falls in the basket. That's what it's always been. But then when Hitler started using it, people were like, this is nasty, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's not the dignified like, tool you. that we yes. thought it was. And it's like, it was always this gross thing. That's great. <laughs> but I'm glad you know now. <laughs> yeah. At least we're starting to have conversations now around capital punishment and, you know, and yeah. those kind of things. But it took kind of the turn of the century, you know, the industrial age, people driving cars and stuff to go slicing off people's heads in public is wrong. Kind of fun. Well, kind, yeah. of, kind of ooh. gnarly. Yeah, it's, like, like, it's a little hardcore. I don't know. <laughs> so, so look at us as humans. <laughs> like, just takes us a look minute. Look at us go. Yeah. <laughs> Upon <laughs> reflection, I don't think I'd like to see a somebody's head cut off in broad daylight. I'd like to go to the cinema. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I think about yeah. it. <laughs> So just a couple of decades removed from World War II, the nation of France was so far from the barbaric stances that they had so long ago that this idea of a falling blade being this distinguished, uh, decent way of killing people was now starting to be um, the subject of conversations in France and all across Western Europe. Because Europe did do, a, in a lot of countries in Europe, um, did away with capital punishment long before the United States did. Yes. Because we also didn't federally in the United States. We still do that. So right. yeah. yeah. So, But a lot of countries in, in Western Europe don't kill people as a form of punishment. Um, but yeah, this became an outdated concept in France um, during the 40s and 50s and 60s. It started to become like this conversation that was had, like, should we be doing this? If we really are the dignified people that we say we are, is killing people in the first place even dignified at all? It's like a Maybe not. Right. The Perhaps answer is not. probably not. Yeah, like, <laughs> the answer is it not. Might, that might not, not be that chill. It was that kind of, it was the 60s. They're like, you know what? That's not chill. <laughs> That's super not chill. <laughs> We're moving into a chill vibe century here. Got to leave some stuff behind. Let's calm yeah. down. <laughs> so all of that backstory brings us to the final time a state-sanctioned gui- guillotining or guillotining took place in France, which was in the year 1977. Hilariously, in a sense, Wild. the same year that Star Wars A New Hope came out. So there was wow. um, this that. really big leap in technology yeah. as far as movies go. Yeah. And also France was still like, we, we cut people's head off. Yeah. yeah, we cut people's head off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when you put We're those two <laughs> events together, you're like at the same time. At the same damn yeah. time. That's yeah, wild. It's super crazy. Like the the idea of such an old form of torture yeah. being still used while, you know, uh my boy Harrison Ford's doing his thing. <laughs> Looking super wow. lean in those in those boot cut uh black pants, those gauchos. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just bounce a quarter. You could bounce a quarter off that thing. So, uh, so um, anyway, yes, this is the story of Hamida De- Hamida Jandubi, who was the last man to be killed in France by the method of guillotine. Fun fact, as we discussed before we went um, live mics with you guys, the last public guillotining uh, actually took place in 1939 when a serial killer named Eugene Weidman was beheaded in front of a crowd of hundreds 
Damn. This, a crowd of like 600 people gathered four hours early. They were passing out sausage sandwiches. People oh, were yeah. like, they were getting, they were like doing the wave. They were no. cheering and it was the Super Bowl. It's Coachella? It's like Coachella Pretty, festival. <laughs> this, was, this was, yes, this was Mer- Coachella this was, festival. This was Coachella. Coachella. Yes. Yes. I get there early. They had like Coachella souvenir 19, stands out there. This was Coachella 1939. Get my seat. They were four yeah. hours early. The, the, behead, the beheading took place at 4 a.m. So we were out there at midnight. Damn. Wow. People were on people front shoulders. Row. <laughs> one people, they picked out their one, outfits a, ahead of time. Yeah, exactly. It's people, yeah, people were wearing straight glitter. They had up glitter. medieval. <laughs> like it is straight up, like from the 1600s. Yes. Like, <laughs> and it's 1939. 1939. Yeah. Like that is wild. Everybody's to wearing me. like Damn. super like flowery headdresses and oh and, yeah, yeah. They, they were, it was it was a very big fashion moment. It's like the what are you wearing? To the <laughs> yeah, Lana Del Rey was there in a past life. Yeah, Lana Del Rey, <laughs> an immortal spirit. Lana Del Rey. She's she's a thousand <laughs> years old, and she was at this because of course she would be. Lana Del Rey is always a ghost in a white dress. <laughs> <laughs> always. She's always. Christopher Lee was actually at that one. Who? Christopher Lee from Star Wars and Dracula and Lord of the Rings. He was at the. He was at this. He was seventeen years old, and he was actually at that wow. one. The nineteen thirty nine one. Yes, and what? he said he didn't look. He said he Close turned at the last back. second. He said he heard it, though. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he said it was like wild. Oh, he heard, he heard it. it? Oh, my goodness. Probably like a crunch or something crazy. I know. Oh, it feels like, like a blade. Blade. No, like, but hearing like the membrane of the, the spine. Be Not if it's and then the cut. head fall. Oh, it's true. Like if it's like, if they used like a, um, a Norelco razor. <laughs> it's probably it, it should be sharp. It, yeah. But then you hear know. a thump. You'd like, hear that thump, thump though. Yeah. Mm. If it was a bick, you'd hear everything. Yeah. This this one, this is the last public one. It was sponsored by Big. It was sponsored. Yeah. The documentary is coming out soon. It was the, how the, the it failed, the, the event. It was like, it was like the Woodstock. Great... It was like Woodstock 99. <laughs> <laughs> a great sponsoring opportunity. It's like Big ruined everything. He, the guy didn't That's die. why Gillette is the best the band can get. Yes. Because they did not <laughs> fall for this. <laughs> yeah, but so um so this last this last one, this last public one. People were going crazy. The 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 beheading took place at like 4 a.m. and people lost their shit. They were throwing their sausage sandwiches. They were living for the moment. Ah, more. Yeah. And the French government was so embarrassed that they were like, "We are never doing this again." So it took yeah, a crowd like, outrage. Wow. Like, it, well, it was, it can't it, no, it's not even outrage. They were the crowd was so excited and ravenous that Fr- the French government was d- it disgusted at itself and was like, "We're not doing this anymore." You guys are having too much. You guys are having too you much fun. Too much fun at this. French like parties, dancing. Yeah, they were the French. They were the fun police. They were the fun police. The fun These people police. had a blast, man. They were, you know, they, they were they were losing their shit. They were throwing stuff. Like they lost their mind. It wasn't like the people lost their mind at this barbaric incident. It was so sick and awesome. <laughs> the French government was like, what? "This is done. You people are animals, you and are we are taking this away from you because we thought you guys would be disgusted, and you guys are too excited. It's over now. It's supposed to be a lesson. You're supposed to learn a yeah, lesson. You're supposed to learn a lesson. You're supposed to walk away from this and be like, party. you shouldn't steal." <laughs> They're like, we we, you know what it was? They were like, we see that you were all humans and that humans are terrible yeah, yeah. and we don't ever want to see that again. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to pretend we're not this This way. is why the government exists to protect the people from themselves. Yes. <laughs> the government makes the decisions that the people would never make because you guys are animals. <laughs> so they had to Which do that. Which is pretty horrifying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's that's really something. horrifying. Yeah. Somebody left that was like, I'm going to frame a dude for thievery tomorrow so that they can be <laughs> yes. another one tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I fucking hate my neighbor. Yeah, let's, like, let's go. Let's him and then he'll be beheaded publicly because we look back at these like public executions from like you know king henry the eighth and all that shit yeah. and we're like oh my god people were like bringing their kids to this yeah. they were just like coming out for this like, like this times were so different people were so wow. terrible back then and then we're like 1939 yeah. we're all like Woo! Yeah, people like, listen to this on the radio. This guy yeah. Die. Yeah, like, it's when everybody's nuts. got on like Wild. you know um leader hosen and those big um, man sparkly dresses. I don't like what William Shakespeare's always depicted in. When I see yes. them in those, I'm like, yeah, those people got beheaded. But when you see somebody in like a, a suit, yeah, see? <laughs> people yes. wearing those kind of suits. Yeah, got yeah. Somebody with a pocket watch and a, and a big bow tie was like... And like a pompadour. Yes, like that's, that's, you're like, people oh. had product in their hair and brushed their teeth. Yes. And they were like, let's go to the beheading. They brushed tonight. their teeth. <laughs> Hygiene was a thing. Exactly. You know, also off topic a little bit, I was having a discussion with my girlfriend the other day and we were talking about how that Fifty Shades of Grey moment like we all just kind of look back on that or we did look back on it and was like people were going to the movie theaters and droves to like watch smut yeah <laughs> like 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 the it was sold out like yeah. this weekend you oh, can't yeah. get a ticket to go see, see 50 shades and there's just a bunch of people in the audience being like 
Oh my. Just yeah. watch it. Like, girls were united. <laughs> when you look back on it, that's really weird to yeah. do. Like, it was like, it's wild. Yeah. Elbow to elbow with a stranger just being like in heat. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like just people mess. are going to look back on that someday and be like, what were these people doing? It's this is true. A, we're a, this is a dirty. We're movie? a weird species of people yes. <laughs> gathering to watch fanfic. Like people, yeah. people have re- are really mm. something. Yeah. Something to we don't get behold. better. We just get weirder. It, we yeah, just man. get different. Carpool to a guillotine is is <laughs> it's yeah. nuts, man. It's wild. eating a sausage sandwich while somebody's getting their head cut off. Cut off and that's nuts. a real thing. Like the sausage sandwich thing is a real thing. Yeah, the shops. There there was two shops right there in there the town square cafes. that were like, we got to load up on sausage sandwiches because there's going to be a, wow. a, a yeah. packed crowd tonight. And they were they had that'll yeah. change you. And there were waiters like joking around. Oh, so with money to be made. Vendors, oh, there's vendors out there like popcorn. Yeah. Get your popcorn. It's straight up medieval. Oh yeah, as hell. Yeah, but it was 1939. <laughs> <Man>. 1939. <laughs> so uh, let's get back to this guy named Hamida Jandubi, the the man in question. So Hamida Jandubi was born on September 22nd, 1949. He was actually born in Tunisia, which. I've not been to, but when I looked up pictures, it's gorgeous. It's like Amazing. a coastal city. Oh, really? It's like a coastal country in Northern Africa. It's um, got beautiful waters. It almost kind of looks like Greece. Hmm. But um, there is a um, travel uh, oh, wow. uh, warning or travel <laughs> advisory yeah. about like there's like uh, high crime at the moment. Oh, but damn it's it. a beautiful. I mean, you look up the. It, I couldn't find a bad picture of it. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, this place is gorgeous. No, this is gorge. I want to go. Yeah. So I guess you know, for, for whatever reason, by the time Hamida was 20 years old, he was like, fuck all this blue water and sun. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. <France>. Which, <laughs> listen, I had a great time when I went to France, but it is pretty dirty. It looks like New York. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. all the pictures that you see are lies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of it. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. El- 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 it's just New York. Every <laughs> restaurant down by the Eiffel Tower sucks. Like they're all like, they want you to leave quickly because it's tourist. It's touristy. Mm. So you really got to go outside. It's like it's like New York. You got to You don't go to Times Square. Okay, that's true. Yeah, no. Yeah, you got to go. There's to a like word Brooklyn. for that. Yeah. Like when you go to Paris and you get disappointed because it's like it's like a thing a lot of people experience. Yes. Is it ennui. <laughs> Is it ennui? <laughs> I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> Keep going, and I'll just interject. Yeah, it's it's yeah the the French disappointment. If you go with the tourist mindset, if you don't, if you go and you're like, oh, I went on TikTok and I was like, places the locals go. I had a great time. Okay, but the the Louvre, uh, the Eiffel Tower, all these things, you're don't never go to gonna the- get close to the Mona Lisa. You're you're the Eiffel Tower. You look at it, but it was closed. Like you couldn't go in it because they were doing construction. Everything is just oh, nice, boy. It's just like, uh. but beautiful people, great shops, and if you go to the places where the locals go, it's a cool city, okay. but it is dirty. Um, <laughs> great public It's called Paris syndrome, by the way. It's a thing. Oh, there you go. People get hallucinations, increased heart rate, nausea, because they're so disappointed. Damn. Yeah. Were Sorry, you that friends. disappointed? Yeah. Really? You're like, wait, I thought that like this was like Amelie. Everybody thinks it's Amelie. Yeah, everybody thinks it's that. They're like, oh, it's going to be like a romantic, beautiful dream. Yeah. So it's mm. not, it's never Sad. that. It's just never wow. that. Um, but anyway, so Hamida had moved to France by the time he was 20 years old. And he was living and working in France as a stock boy at a grocery store. He also had a job as a landscaper, but in 1971, he suffered an accident on the job. One of Hamida's legs was caught in a tractor, crushing it horribly and causing him to lose two thirds of his right leg. Oh, oh, that's a lot of your leg. That's a lot of your leg. That's almost all of it. That's yeah. pretty that's, much yeah, all I mean, of it. Yeah. But I like, see what they did in that. Um, remember that two, that um, two part movie thing that came out with Rose McGowan when she made it a gun? Oh, yes. Oh. The grindhouse. <laughs> oh, he lost about <laughs> yes. that much of his leg, like up to most of up, up to his quad. That. Kind of about that movie. Well, yeah, well, that, was a, that was a really bold idea for like two thousand. That was a wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a double feature horror that. movie. I forgot about that. Movie. I was like, I'm not sitting in the movie for five hours. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd love it, but She's like AK forty seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she had an AK AK forty seven leg. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it, and it it was that was a uh, when movies are just I like when movies are silly. It's like how does I she pull too. the trigger with like her like what pulls the trick? Who knows? Who knows? It's, 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 and it you works. know what? Who cares? Movie magic, and that's I love yeah. when movies do. They're like, don't, don't ask questions. There's this this yeah. lady has a gun as a leg. That's awesome. Just happens. Yeah. Whenever the theme of a movie is, don't worry about it. That's when I love. <laughs> that's it. fun. Like, like when you I'm ask a question, in. you just go, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah, you don't ask questions. Just enjoy yeah. what's happening. Take the ride. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, Hamida did lose about two thirds of his legs, and he did not get a cool gun. Like he just. They gave him a prosthetic eventually. Um, 
He struggled to find work for years after this accident. And this is when he started to take up drinking and using controlled substances. Mm -hmm. And in 1973, he met a young woman named Elizabeth Bisquet. Okay. That's an elegant name. Like it's that. a very elegant name. Mm, that I, is. Yeah. Sidebar, I am ashamed at how long I did call biscuits biscuits. Biscuits. Um, biscuits. Um, <laughs> I think you should still call biscuits. Yeah, you should biscuits. be ashamed. It's the same thing as what, what was the other word we were talking about? It's, as guillotine. Yeah, that's it what looks I call like my yeah, biscuit. It has a call, Q and an I. That's in what I call it. my dog. My dog's name is Biscuit. So, Biscuit. Bis, bis, or at least Biscuit. Biscuits. <laughs> it's when they're fancy. <laughs> Why not? You know, think outside yeah. the box. I'm just saying. Think, I'm just yeah. telling people if you if you take nothing else from affirmative murder, know that hey, we like to think outside the box yeah. over there. Yeah, romanticize everyday life. Exactly. You know? So <laughs> biscuits. Yeah, a biscuit. Have a nice biscuit, some tea. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so these two met while uh, Hamida was recovering in the hospital from an amputation because at first he lost a leg, but then he had to have a couple of amputation surgeries to kind of clean it up and mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. Get it get it where it needed to be. Um, and while he was sitting in the hospital, he met Elizabeth Bisquet. But not long after meeting, Elizabeth filed a complaint against Jan Duby, alleging that he tried to force her into prostitution. So, yeah. Which is yeah. horrifying to That's think so about. Scary. That he's just being taken care of by this, because she's like a nurse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. She comes and checks and on the patients. Yeah. And he's trying to force her into sex work. It's like, wh how, wow. where did those two things connect? And he's how like, did this happen? That's He's down and out, and he's still yeah. this evil. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Oh, that's yeah. What, yeah. When somebody's in their darkest time, and they're still like, how can I manipulate and uh, uh, exploit people? Yeah. Yeah, like, that. I mean, yes. you really, like, this person is Take trying care. to be nice to you while you're <laughs> not even more than half of your leg is gone. And you're, while they're talking, you're like, oh, I'm going to fucking manipulate and just uh, trick you yeah. so bad. That's I'm really gonna try evil. to ruin your life. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> dark. Like, wow. That's dark side. <laughs> I'm going to gaslight and destroy your life. While they're just yeah. like, you need a sponge bath? Can that's I help you? Person. That's a really evil that's, person. At their darkest. Yeah. yeah. That's dark sided. Yeah, I'll I tell you what, if 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 uh Obi-Wan Kenobi had looked down on Anakin Skywalker while he was all burnt up on that uh, lava mountain and and he said, like, one day I'm gonna be a super evil dude and kill everybody, I think he would have killed him. At the time, <laughs> he like you have that pity. You're like, I'm yeah. here to help, I'm here to help yeah. you. You're down on your luck. And but if you knew in his mind, he's like, Oh, I'm gonna human traffic you. You'd be like, oh God. You'd be like, oh fuck that. <laughs> yeah, you're terrible. Get out of here. No. Yeah. So he fell down that classic um tractor accident to sex trafficking predator pipeline. You know, it's yes. an easy one to fall into. You know, you, absolutely. Right. We've all heard of yada yada yada, yada yeah. sex trafficker. Bingo. That's what his like, that's what his defense tried to use. Yeah, they were like that wow. exact how you defense. Get like, you know how this <laughs> happens. Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know if that was going to work. Yeah. Not so much. I ruptured my Achilles like five years ago, and I was super <laughs> bummed out. Never thought about committing horrible crimes against right. people. Though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was I exactly. a little bummed? Yeah. What Absolutely. did I do? I smoked a little weed, and I watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Didn't think about it. <laughs> That's how you handle that. I was that. never That's like, healthy. I'm going to like make Girl Scouts sell cookies for me without giving them the money to get their prizes. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my brain never cooked up some kind of crazy never got there. scheme. I was not scheming. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Jan Duby was arrested for um, her filing a complaint against him, but he was released not long after because it, it was a complaint. There was nothing, nothing criminal to charge him with. Uh, upon his release, though, Hamida lured two other young girls to his apartment and forced them into prostitution for his financial benefit. And it's actually really interesting. The times uh, in France, like if if anybody's seen Moulin Rouge, this was the time of the madam. Like there was a lot of like brothels and madams. And there's one madam in particular. I, don't, I didn't write her name down, but she was the most famous madam. And her um her signature was she would make all of the women that she forced into sex work mm -hmm. get plastic surgery, like immediately. Like, wow. like she would get them under her control and then get make them have plastic surgery it was like that was like That's her stamp so and this is plastic surgery in like the 1970s right it's not awesome yeah. plastic surgeries but it's like you all get it and yeah, so, yeah. and so it, in france this was a very popular like brothels and madams and mm -hmm. all these things and so he kind of tried to follow that same pathway but he was using his apartment and um he he wasn't good at it but he was still a man who was manipulating women. Right. He was still making women be under his control. But that was his idea when you he couldn't get a job as a stock boy. He's like, I'll become a, a pimp or whatever you call yeah. that in French. So like I said, Jan Duby is now seeing himself as some kind of a pimp. And his arrogance as a man didn't let him let go of the fact that Elizabeth Bisquet had filed a complaint against him. So for the next year, he fixated on the fact that she wasn't under his control. She didn't fall for his tricks or lies or whatever yeah. and become one of his... Um, uh, women or whatever. Um, and they call them um, uh, lorettes. That's the French word for um, a sex worker. 
that works oh, yeah, oh, okay. at, at the okay. time. Like, hmm. um, there's Lorette's, and then there is what was Satine and Moulin? That's why I brought up Moulin Rouge. She was a oh, uh, a courtesan. A courtesan. A courtesan mm. is like I, you work you work with one specific John, and they kind of fund your lifestyle. Where Lorette is what you think of a sex worker, like a a, a rotating cast Got of people you. Okay. that you know. Okay, mm. so that was a Lorette, but a, a a courtesan is more like oh, I, I have you a rich a, a rich dignitary takes care of me. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but yeah. they but they all work at a, a brothel for Madam. Mm. It's just yeah. different levels of it, I guess. Um, but yeah, so he sees himself as as this, but he's still, you know, Elizabeth Bisquet is in the back of his mind. Is this the one that got away? The one that tried to put him in prison? He can't let, go. He can't let it she go. She bested him. He fixates on it until July of 1972. That's so scary that he fixated that long. Yeah, he just couldn't let it go. Oh, that's so scary. That's, yeah, that's evil. Well, men are scary, uh, you know, and that's one thing as a man in <laughs> yep. true crime, you don't really, as a man not in true crime, if you don't have conversations with women, you don't really know how scary men are when you're a man. But when you when you yeah. hear a woman go like, oh, walking down the street, yeah. like what men are thinking about, like all of these things are like, they're all, they all can be dangerous to somebody, you know, but oh, you, yeah. you, like, you never look at it that way. Of course. A woman's Roman empire is being killed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like, it, it's, and it's, and it's probably, you think by a man, like some yeah. guy that's oh, looking yeah. on your Instagram 100%. or yeah. you go to the thing, gym as them. And it's just some guy just yep. like, I like you now. And Could be anybody. Those are my feelings. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. How you feel doesn't have anything to do with that. Right. Yeah. That's, yep. Yeah. Well, I followed you to your it's car because so I want your number. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that, that's fine. So I don't want to give it to you. But like, I want it though. That's <laughs> scary. I don't yeah. think of that as, that's just not an experience I've had in my life. As a man, yeah, yeah, man you don't. In my, in my younger years, I've had some aggressive women be like, well, give me your phone number. But I was never like, Ooh. Terrified. Yeah, you know, she like, it's just me. so, you know, <laughs> like, lucky, you're lucky just like, what a weird us. lady. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. You know, and <laughs> I think away. that's hard, a, a hard concept for a lot of men to be like, why don't you just say no? And it's like, well, yeah. intimidation, fear, right. you know, like, it's right. a lot of things. It's a lot Absolutely. more complicated than that. Because you don't want to piss a man off. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes Cause... people do say no, and it, it doesn't and then work. It, and it doesn't then, work out. then the bad things ha- happen it goes faster, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah I mean, you can't even really take a walk or a jog alone as a woman anymore. Like, you can't. Like, I would love to take a jog yeah. in the morning, like oh, early yeah. morning with like music on, but I could never do that. Like, I my husband's like, absolutely not. Like, you're not going by yourself. Like, if you want to go for a walk, your husband has to you go ha- with he you. He has to come. Yeah. yeah. So you can't have like alone time to like just zone out to like music. Yeah. With your cute pink headphones. Yeah, it's like yeah. little things spot. like that. <laughs> I remember telling, I told Alvin, I went to Myrtle Beach maybe a couple of years ago and it was a, we was out mini golfing and there was a, a young lady going for a jog. It was maybe, maybe like nine o'clock at night. She had headphones on. I was like, Oh my god! That's, oh. It, I mean, it kind of made me Shocking. scared. I was like, "That's crazy." She's drunk by herself late at night. I mean, I'm not from Myrtle Beach, but that's still terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like worried for her, right? Exactly. You're like, be careful. I've, I've had we we have had many a conversations where we're just casually talking, and we're like, um, "I got the AirPod Maxes last year." And mm-hmm. you, I'm like, you hit the button and everybody goes away. I don't know what's Can't going on. I don't know. Yes. And like, you have that conversation. That like, button is for men. Yes, like, yes. that's exactly. You're like, <laughs> so I'm like, I hit this button and I, you could come hit me in the back of the head with a bat. I couldn't know what to do. <laughs> <who's laughs> yeah. we're, like, we're like, but we're like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on in my surroundings when I hit this button. I'm like, yelling, can you hear me? You can't. You just see my lips moving. <laughs> it's, it's like, like awesome. Like, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the freedom of a man to be like, you could just like just turn off your, saying, yeah, your yeah, guard. Like, like, yeah, it's like, yes, it's so true. Because we have those two and we were doing that. We're like, well, I can't hear you at all. And I was like, I could never wear these outside of the house. Nope. <laughs> I, I would like, never wow. hit this button if I wasn't in the safety of my no. home. No, right. nope. never. Even with the button off, I'm like, should I be wearing these? Yeah, I'm like, I shouldn't wear these outside. They're going to think I can't hear them. <laughs> nope. Um, so, yeah. So, like I said, um, Ham- Hamida Jandubi fixated on Elizabeth Bisquet for a year until ni- in 1974, he kidnapped her and brought her to his home. My God. Now his home has, so was acting as some kind of makeshift brothel. He had the other, the other two young ladies were still there. They all lived together and he brings her in to the home. He beat Elizabeth in full view of the terrified girls and Ooh. even went as far as to um, put out lit cigarettes on her body. Mm. So this was very, oh uh, very like vindictive and evil Yes. Fightful years, I mean, days and days of and weeks of thinking and fixating on her, and and he didn't take it. He took his time in getting his revenge yeah. on her. Wow, yeah, he straight up tortured her. Yeah, really, yeah, really horrible. And also to do it in front of the two other women that were under the control of his sex trafficking ring yeah. was yes. also intentional as well. Probably trying to, like, trying to prove a point. Oh yeah, see what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like yep. this will happen to you if you try oh, to yeah. go. Kind of flexes his muscle a little bit. Yep. Ooh. So. 
Bisquet actually survived the ordeal, but after the torture, Hamida drove her to the outskirts of Marseille, another lovely town, beautiful, beautiful city. And um, but he strangled her on the outskirts of Marseille. Um, he then returned from the brutal murder, and Jen Duby warned the other two girls not to say anything about what they had seen or else, you know, that whole impl- implications thing. Yeah. There's yeah. the intimidation. But on July 7th, 1974, Elizabeth Bisquet's body was discovered in a shed, and the investigation by the police was launched. However, though, Jen Duby was so arrogant that he moved on from that immediately, and, and not more than a couple of days later, he went back out to try to kidnap another young girl with the intention of forcing her into his sex trafficking ring. So he's looking to get a third woman into his sex trafficking ring. But the young lady managed to flee, probably because she ran. So she got away, she gets away, and um, she filed a police report against the police and they went and arrested him. But they arrested him again for a, rep- a complaint, basically, which is what Elizabeth Bisquetta filed against him. So he was arrested, but during the time that he was in holding, they actually brought him up on charges for the murder of Elizabeth Bis- Bisquet. So thankfully, they were able to connect the dots because he was a human trafficker, yeah. w- what his actions were, and then they put that together with how Elizabeth Bisquet was killed. And also read something that the two women, once he was arrested, came forward and, and gave their accounts as well. How did it? Yeah, so it was like kind of put it all together in that moment. But thank you know he he could have been let out on a, whatever the way he was let out when you know he threatened Elizabeth Bisquet. So thankfully he wasn't. And thank goodness those other two women were able to talk about what happened to them because sometimes they break them so hard that they don't even feel like they can yeah. speak out against. Yeah, them. they probably saw it as like their opportunity. Like yeah. we have to do this while he's incarcerated. For sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that. I think that's what happened. I think they were like, this is our moment to to get him. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah, so after two and a half years of sitting in prison, on February 24th, 1977, Amita Janduby appeared in court on charges of torture, murder, rape, and premeditated violence. His defense, as Elena alluded to, was that the tragic loss of two-thirds of his leg drove him to a period of alcohol abuse and violence, which transformed him into a different person. Sure. Yeah. And that different person just happened to be a, a human trafficker. And it's, it's like, like, okay, <laughs> then we're going to imprison that different person yeah. that you are today. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. that, that different person? Is that, you're going to be going, you're going under to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's like, to the show sure. now. Yeah. yeah. Because plenty of people go through that and don't do what he did. Like, yeah, come on. For sure. That's the shittiest defense ever. <laughs> it is. It's like he lost his leg. Yeah. To try to fucking uh, weaponize mental illness like that. To be like, I, I was going through a time of darkness. Exactly. And I became a full-blown criminal. Yeah, it's like, All so right, I man, should well, be just let free. Like, there's other ways to right. like deal with your, you know, not having a job. And I'm listen. If you go through a tragic accident and your life has changed forever, if I ruptured my Achilles in 1977, I would have a limp for the rest of my life. Yeah. Thankfully, modern science is, you know, you can get a, a, a surgery and now I can play basketball again and I can run and everything. But if I was now a person who walked different mm-hmm. and couldn't work the same job that I did, that would affect me mentally. That's no excuse Absolutely. to start. Absolutely not. Ruining people's lives and like yeah. kidnapping no people and stuff. Like, yes. that's what I'm saying. Go to, go, to, go to therapy. The things that therapy can resolve, you'll be amazed by. It's wild. <laughs> Any other outlet than hurting other human beings or yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else. Yeah. Any- <laughs> you know, hurt, they say, you know, and everybody else goes, hurt people hurt people. Like, no, don't just, that's, let's not, let's not just normalize that. Like, exactly. That's an like, excuse. I know we say it like that's a bad thing, but. Right. Well, hurt people can do other things. Yeah. Hurt people go to therapy. That's the 2024 slogan. Hurt people go to therapy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the very next day, um, so this would be February 25th, Hamida Janduby was sentenced to death. Like they they heard they heard all they needed to hear. His defense said their bullshit that they said. And they were like, you're not, not wasting, you're not wasting time. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah uh-huh. Alcohol abuse. Like, guilty. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still guilty. <laughs> they went and deliberated for a cool 45 minutes and uh, they came back with that death uh, by guillotine verdict. Damn. And uh, after a denied appeal, Hamida was also informed that he would not receive a reprieve, a reprieve from the then president of France. So he was... But no way he thought he was like sitting there and was like, oh, was, damn. Oh, man. <laughs> he was like, he's going to come through. He's going to come through. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> if President Hong <laughs> can send a reprieve, <laughs> if he sends that reprieve, I'll be good to go. I'll be golden. You know? and, it, and the president did not do that. Nah. <laughs> That's not President <laughs> Hong's style. <laughs> Ha <laughs> does not play like that. He President Ha Ha was like, no, no, <laughs> no. Homie, don't play that. The one thing about no President Ha Ha, he doesn't like guys that do what he did. So he's like, he doesn't no, mess around. <laughs> no reprieve for you. 
He no, said, no. Ha ha, uh uh. Ha ha said, uh uh. So the president of France denied a reprieve uh, for Hamida. And in the early morning of September 10th, 1977, 12 days before his 28th birthday, Hamida Jandou. Oh my was, God. Yeah, he was only 27. He was only 28 years old. So he was. Wow. He, was, he didn't make it to 28. He was 27 Plus, years yeah, old. 50 years old. No, this is a young, a young, young boy. I mean, by the time he was 20, he was working at the stock place. He, his, his injury happened wow. by the time he was like 23 wow. years old. So between 23 and 27, he had a life as a scummy human trafficker. He's and literally my age. He's a literal baby. Baby. That's crazy. And now he's sitting he's at the gallows, man. Crazy Damn. times. Damn. Being there with a guy holding a, a, a curtain rod or whatever the string is yeah. to drop a fucking, a big razor on your neck. Man. And they walk you past oh, walk so- that the wicker bucket. basket yeah. Yeah. that oh. your headless body is going to be placed into. Like you just you just breeze right by it. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, that to they me. They said he was like, like really trying to buy time. He's smoking cigarettes. Oh wine. yeah, they told him like that's enough. Yeah, like, he was really so tough. many cigarettes. <laughs> He's really he get another. He said, chill he out. Dragged, like, yeah. In a glass, he, yeah. I think, yeah, like I think he had like three cigarettes and a glass of water. And he, was, I don't was, blame him though. I mean, like he was taking. I think those he had some rum too. He was like, I'm going to save for this. Him. Yeah, he was taking those. You got a Gillette oh. razor just staring at you, and you're like, yes. oh, this is the end. That last meal? Yeah. Oh, the last meal. Oh, the last smoke? See the, and you see somebody like, swing, swing, swing. Sharpening. Sharpening yeah. the knife. is like, oh, yeah. I'll have everything. <laughs> Literally everything. Take me to the buffet. Because <laughs> you think about it, and you're like, when I finish this cigarette, this is that's that a is wrap. the last thing I do. Oh. That is it. Or if I take this last sip. That's the last thing I do. Oh. I would want to be like a little tipsy. Oh, they would, a have, little. To they would have to fight me. They would have to pull that cigarette. <laughs> no, I'm not done. <laughs> you guys it after the cigarette. <laughs> you would have, have to pull that from me. Smoking right. the filter. <laughs> they spray it. They, they spray it. Yeah. And put, put the fire out. Put it out. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's so stressful <laughs> to think about. Yeah, that's a lot to reconcile. Oh, it's like it's coming to an end. Yeah. And that's... then, yeah, like, and then, like, this is the bucket this your head is, is going to fall in. Yeah. And uh, so. <laughs> so, like, here's the basket that will put your headless body in. He has white gloves on. Like, this is what yeah, like, Oh, yeah. Him. He's real, real classy. The <laughs> real guy, classy, he's yeah. a real classy guy. He's got ass Jeeves gloves on. He's like, <laughs> and here's your bag. Here's your head basket. Ass Jeeves gloves. Because I think oh, Eugene man. Weidman there, the guy, the last public execution there in uh, like 39. 39. Yeah. He, when they walked him out, his eyes were closed the whole, he didn't want to look at anything. Oh. He just squeezed his eyes shut the whole time. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I would be the same way. Same. I don't want to see that. I don't, don't want to look at this. I wouldn't either. That's where my head is going to fall. You bump into the basket. They're like, this is a, this is a second generation guillotine. Yeah. They, they start taking you through like it's a Winnebago. They're like, this is a... It's guillotine 2.0. Yeah, we really streamlined <laughs> things. <laughs> this is a titanium string that it falls from. You're yeah, like, oh, this man. vicious serial killer is reduced into like yeah. closing his, his eyes. eyes shut like a kid. Yeah. Like, it's just like, ooh. I know, and for a second I was like, oh, and then I was like, wait and a second. Like, wait yeah, a second. Fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too many emotions. That part is kind of... When you talk about it being the great equalizer, yeah. When you talk about somebody being this horrible thing, person that did this horrible thing, and then them being it brings you right down. Yeah. In that moment, them yeah. being scared. Absolutely. It's like no matter who you are or what you did, when you see that in the basket and the thing, everybody's this it's the same reaction. Sure. You know? No one's looking at that stoically. No. It's not happening. No, 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 no. I you know, Marie Antoinette was so um flustered and and fucked up and scared. And it was they, they killed Marie Antoinette for a lot of fucked up reasons. It was, yeah, it was yeah, they really did. fucked up. But she apologized to the guy that did the thing, like, because um, yeah. she stepped on his shoes. She was so flustered. Mm-hmm. Like, she didn't know, like, wow. you know, what yeah. what to yeah. do. She apologized to him for stepping on the shoes. That was her last word. It's like, wow. Meanwhile, you're going to be cutting my head off in a second, but I'm sorry I stepped on your shoes. Yeah, I was like, sorry, I got I scuffed up your shoes on this. Sorry. Yeah. But you're just so like, I don't, I, who knows what I would say? Yeah. I was, did I leave the pot? Did I leave the pot on? I don't <laughs> Yeah, like oh, don't 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 record that. You like don't. I don't want that to be the last thing. Yeah. It's so gross. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So, um, yeah, September tenth, nineteen seventy seven, twelve days before his twenty eighth birthday, Hamida Jandubi was guillotined at the Bamet Prison in Marseille shortly after four forty a.m. And like I said, it, there's really like no better city I can think of that to be killed in because it's a beautiful city. You look up pictures of Marseille, gorgeous. But, oh really? Yeah, it's really so pretty. nice sight to see before. It's nice sight to see when you're looking out. out that window, like a I picture like a hunchback of Notre Dame style. Like I think every prison in Europe is made <laughs> yep. of bricks, and then they have like bars. <laughs> and, you look yeah. out, and you look out and you see the beautiful coast of Marseille. It's like, oh wow, so there this you is, go. Oh, très magnifique. For the last time, and then nice. and then they take you off to um, yeah. 
slice your, yeah. slice your head off. Oh. Now, there is some debate as to whether a person is still alive, even briefly mm. after a beheading. And um, some physicians have done studies um, in the last century that show brain activity in animals, like um, rats and stuff, for like up to 30 seconds. So, but they say this could be a reaction to the pain receptors from uh, the quick slicing. Like it could just be the pain receptors reacting as far as blinking and stuff that people have said they've seen heads doing baskets. This is has been seen in like rat people being bit by rattlesnakes that have been beheaded. Hmm. Or like I have a friend, um, she uh, embalms, she, she works at a funeral home and she said the dead bodies, they sigh. Elena, can you, they do. you yeah, attest you to that? They do, I can't oh, really? attest to that. That does happen because air will be forced out sometimes and it'll, wow. in a, a little bit of like a moan will come with it sometimes because it's just like a trapped that moment almost. rocked my spine when she, when she told me that. That'll, no, that's fucked that'll up. That'll rock your shit when you're alone Dang. in a morgue. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> I yourself. think I'll never find myself in that position. <laughs> yeah. So That's terrible. And she's, <laughs> they warned me ahead of time of that, thankfully, because when it happened, I was like, oh, and I was like, okay. All right, I know what that is. And she said wow. it was like melancholic. Like it's very much like a, it is. Uh, yeah. Oh. It's a very sad. So like it's like a little like you're bored. Is it like uh, different, being dead? Is there boring. like different tones to like it being a male and female or is it just a Yeah, it can be and it's like different when like different methods of it coming out. Like sometimes when you cut, sometimes the air just escapes. So like it'll just be like a huh. No, oh. when you're that that in in that moment? Like that. Oh god. Yeah. Certain air will escape uh, in certain uh, hurry ways. Up. So it's it's interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's Get fucked. this over yeah. with. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't wild. know that, that yeah. when you cut even. Yeah, just Dang. like there's certain ways when you're like manipulating a body, if there's trapped air somewhere, it's yeah. coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so it is controversial. But anyways, it is possible that Hamida Jandubi sat with his head in that basket, reflecting on his life for like 30 seconds before the curtains faded, you know? Those curtains closed. And- you kind of hope so. That like he was like fuck I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, as he sat in that <laughs> basket. Does that last thirty seconds? Yeah, just yeah. have a moment of like ooh, regrets. Is, are yeah. they tied up? Like, are they laying down? I think they um you know tie their hands behind their backs, or they might oh. even be like, we got you here, man. Just sit down on your yeah. down on your knees. I think and... they lay like belly down. Yeah, and you'd somebody have... holds their feet. You'd have so, to like, tie they me can't. up. Oh, yeah. not, yeah. There's no so way can't, I'm like, just gonna like like yeah I'm just gonna like go along with this. It's not happening. But, Didn't yeah. they used to put like a hood over your head too? I think they did for they did it for hangings for hangings because you're sometimes your eyes are scary. scary. But yeah. yeah, they might have done it for that because then they, the head yeah. falls in the basket and then it's had in a bag. You take you the bag out the and bag. then they lock your head yeah. more hygienic. What, what is the thing called? They lock your head because you can't because that was, oh that's a stockade. Okay, that's for when you want to be mm. pummeled with tomatoes. Yes, <laughs> when you want to. <laughs> Those be. are for minor crimes. That's for like you know, um, you you uh, look you, you, you look at church. a married woman in public. <laughs> yeah, they put you in the stockade and throw tomatoes at your face. You showed an ankle. <laughs> yeah, you yeah you were a, you were a Jezebel. Yeah, you had your knees out. Oh, scandalo! <laughs> Just get yeah. beat with tomatoes in, in, the, in the town square. Um, but yes, uh, that was the story of Hamida Jandubi and the last time a guillotine was used on a human being in France and in Western Europe. Damn. That's so wow. wild. That's crazy. They also used to call it the National Razor. No. By the way, I just saw. <laughs> yeah. That's more metal. I kind of yeah, like that's, that. That's hard. Really metal. We're taking you the to the nation, National the razor, razor today. I did, yeah. really, I did like look up because I always wonder why the razor was at an angle. Mm-hmm. So they said they'd mm. do that so it's the easy slice because if it was flat, it'll like bounce. Uh-huh. Or it'll, it'll be yeah. some breaking of the neck. Yes. I'm guessing that's like more horrible. That makes sense. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> I, like, slice. I, well, like, I, like, like I told you in the beginning, when you talk about their, their methods, they used to just have one guy with an axe. Yes. And it was kind of dull. Good... And so it would take a couple of swipes, like two, three, oh. four swipes. And there was even, you know, everything creates a market, right? So there were people who were like, if you loved your family member, you'd slip the, you'd slip the, the, the um, warden or the guy with the axe some money to use a sharper axe. Yeah, like wow. can you try here's, so you here's get, 20 bucks man yeah. can you try hard to like really get it in one go because mm. there were some where it was like they would slip and hit them in the back <gasps> there was some where Man, they would like they would slip quote, yeah unquote. like slip they would, fuck you because some of those executioners were just like get wrecked <laughs> drunk and like some of them were like you know having to deal with doing this all the time so they would show up like just completely wasted and like oh, I'd be so back. pissed if mine was drunk and missed Jesus completely Christ. missed yeah wow yeah. and then sometimes I think the person who was being executed had to pay the executioner as they walked up onto the for the service the, the scaffold the like could you cut my head off please like a lot of um like King Henry the Eighth uh, wives, wives who were 
murdered that way, like handed them like a bag of coins before. The beheading tax. Yeah. You, 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 hey, listen, they man. tax they tax you till it's over, man. Like till yeah. you have the beheading. <laughs> you have to pay tax. for everything. You gotta you gotta pay for the service. You gotta you gotta pay the beheader. That's humiliating too, isn't it? Like you're paying for this. Yeah, like, that's that adds a level of humiliation. Yeah, don't tap my pockets yeah. one last time before you slice my head off, no. especially when yeah. when yeah. it's right? the guy with the axe. I'd much rather face the guillotine than a guy just named Marcus. <laughs> yeah, just like. All right, let's do this. With an axe is crazy. With an axe and his doll. And they have to be able to aim correctly. And like you said, you need that angle. Yeah, you got to really hit a specific spot. Like you said, a back. You get right. hit in the back with an axe. So fucked up. What do you say, my bad? Yeah, sorry, bro. Yeah, hey, like, man. oops. <laughs> Whoopsie, yeah. Daisy, bro. Oops, sorry. Do it again. Hey, bro, scoot back a little bit. Sorry about that. You, <laughs> you weren't on the mark. That was your fault. It was your bad. That was your fault. That was your fault. <laughs> your fault. <laughs> like, mine's... <laughs> <laughs> my spine's my spine's out. You're like, no, it was on you. It was your fault. It was your fault. You're like, was your that fault. was on you. <laughs> Don't worry, that wasn't me. Yeah, it was your fault. It was your wow. you, you flinched. You flinched. You flinched, dude. You flinched. Damn. You flinched. That's wild. <laughs> and imagine just going home after that, like the as the executioner. You're just like, all right. You just go home to your family. Did you make dinner? Imagine going home after that yeah. as the public and being like, that was sick, man. That was, like, awesome. that was yeah. so cool. I don't want to imagine that. Like, that was, <laughs> like truly. Like, like, people would bring their kids to those things. Yeah. We've come a long way in a lot of ways, but not really as well. I don't know about that. I remember yeah. like, I, when I, whenever I watch political shows, I'm like, whenever we, like, when we watch stuff like um, 300 and stuff, and they're like, a dagger in the sleeve and people putting poison in cups. I'm like, that stuff's just, it's still happening. People are just wearing Tom Ford suits now. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. We're all like, it's, it's we've come such a long way. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, this happened really. in 1977. <laughs> yeah. Really not that long away. Yeah. They're like, now it's <gasps> democracy. I'm like, no, that stuff just happens. Behind closed doors. <laughs> it really yeah, does sound like it was yeah. super long ago, though. What? The it's, guillotine? The guillotine. Yeah, no. Bro, yeah. Star Wars was out. That's like 50 wow. years, not even. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that is not... Damn. That's like... Like, my mom was born when that one happened. Yeah, <laughs> I was born only a few years later. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, less than 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <man. laughs> That's yeah. eight years before your you first B day. Yeah, you just yeah. eight years later, I came. Hey, Dag came Nabbit, this world. Yeah. I wasn't even a thought. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey. yeah, you know, you know, as Gen Zs, you know, just, you know, just like <laughs> super young and like porcelain skin, baby. I don't know. claim that though. No, it's a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> the elders here, like, <laughs> I'm like, and I was like the next year. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow, what a story. But yeah, Hamida Janduby and the guillotine. What a story. Thank you for telling us that. Thank you guys for listening. I, I really That I horrifying know. tale. Yeah, thank you for bringing that beautiful, beautiful <laughs> tale our way. That was a wild one, right? Yeah. That was crazy. It really was. And he was, I mean, he was evil. Also, I, I, can I just take a second before we go? Can I give you guys your flowers uh, really quick? Because you guys had Holly Madison on your podcast a couple of times. And um, I love her story and who she is. And I just, when I think about my youth and what TV was in the early 2000s and how women were exploited so crazy, like everything oh, about yeah. the early 2000s was like um, pixelated mouths and pixelated bodies and, you know, yep. Anna Nicole Smith and Holly Madison and all, you know, all these people who, who imagine what an Anna Nicole Smith podcast would be today. She's probably such an yeah. interesting and amazing person, but she was like exploited by the powers of that be at the time of what they thought people wanted to see from reality television mm -hmm. and to hear mm -hmm. her going on, on your platform and tell a story and just be like a, a person, you know, I hate to, I don't mean to say it in a, like a misogynistic way, but like, to, no, it's to true. see her no, get right. to be yeah. a person is like, it was, it, was like mm -hmm. it was like really cool. Cause I only know her from the girls next door show. And, and yeah, you know, to get and, to be like her own person. Yeah, yes. exactly. So, and she's yeah. such an interesting person. Her and Bridget yeah. are so sweet. So like, smart. So sweet, so smart, so interesting, so like multifaceted. And so kind. I love yeah, them. They're just like, and it's like, I want everybody to know that. <laughs> like, they're so amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, they are not just from the girls next door. Because yeah. I used to love that show when I was younger. Like, oh, same. We used to watch it. Yeah. And now you watch it so different. Yeah. You're like, that was I not know. entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> that that <laughs> was <shit>. dark. <laughs> no, but thank you. It's like, yeah, she's thank you. amazing. I highly recommend. And Girls Next Level, their podcast is so good, so interesting to listen to. Yeah, so I just wanted, I just wanted to give you guys, I just wanted to shout you guys out because I thought that was really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, you need to go listen to Affirmative Murder. I'm telling you, 
we don't recommend things lightly here. No, you we know don't. that. So <laughs> go run over and gobble up that feed because you just heard the storytelling ability. It's chef's kiss. Everything Mwah. you need. And if you guys want to like shout out anything you have coming up, any of your socials, anything you want to shout out, um, feel free. Uh, just affirmative murder. Fran is uh, taking up DJing. Yeah. Uh, so you might Ooh. be able to see oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe do, get a resident. <laughs> they're, getting, like, they're giving out residencies in Vegas like hotcakes these days. <laughs> I'm trying so to get you, one. you might you might catch Vegas yeah, spinning some, get, spinning some records at, in get. in Vegas this summer. <laughs> uh, but other than that, affirmative murder, you can catch us on all the social media platforms. Uh, and chat chat it up. We're on, we're on there talking it up with people and all that kind of good stuff. Um, affirmative murders every Thursday, and we also do a, a listener tale st- t- style thing on Mondays where we our listeners send us in crazy stories from their hometowns and stuff like that. So those are Monday. Then yeah, affirmative murder. Check us out. Check if you'd out. like. Hell yeah. Hey, Rob. No, you don't have a choice. Do <laughs> it. Do it. <laughs> Keep it that weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So go listen to Affirmative Murder, and we hope you keep listening, and we hope you keep it weird. weird. But, not but not so, so weird, weird that you, you don't, don't go listen. listen. To ah! I was going to say Affirmative Murder, but I stumbled. <laughs> <laughs> we we kind of did that. Oh, man. <laughs>